Hi, this is a sort of tidy up video uh, just reviewing some of the things that help with reloading. Not, they're not essential but they're very useful and they do make the process a lot easier. I'll also cover some other things um, in the same video that uh, you might find interesting. The first one is um, my powder thrower here. It's an RCBS Uniflow powder measure and I've had a, cu a couple of modifications to it that uh, one is very cheap and that's the powder baffle in here. I can't actually reach it with my fingers but you can see it in the bottom of there if I zoom in. You can see it there. Now what that does is ensure that well, however much powder you've got in the hopper, virtually the same weight of powder exerts its weight on the rotor here. Um, as you probably know, these throwers are reasonably accurate, but it does depend on the type of powder that you've got in them. If you've got ball powder, they're pretty uh, spot on, but if you've got the uh, extruded powders, sometimes they can vary a little bit, and what the baffle does is ensure that there's the same weight of powder on the rotor no matter how empty or full this is. So that's a good mod. doesn't cost very much. You can get them from Midway, people like that. Come back out. Okay, down here. Now this mod is a micrometer measure which you can add to your powder measure or not if you don't want to spend the money they're not that cheap but very very useful now what I do with this is set my scales up obviously find out by trial and error first of all with a particular powder like Varget the setting where the weight is correct or just under because I always trickle actually but this is still useful then I make a note of that and I can go back to that setting because you can see here there's witness marks on the tube here and on the adjuster here. So you can go back to that setting later if you make a note of it and you'll get close to where you were before. Now this device does not get rid of the need to weigh your charges but it does get you back on uh, the, t the weight that you want very quickly and of course you can make very small adjustments precise adjustments to the powder thrown and go back to them if they're too much or too little. With the um, adjuster that comes with the RCBS as standard you've got to adjust a, a screw and then you've got to lock it up with a nut so uh, it does work but it's a little bit more time consuming. This device makes it very easy and it has no lock nut. It's stiff enough to stay where it's set So I recommend that. Now if I just go over to the centre of the bench here, like that, you can see that on my reloading bench I fitted a a small strip light. Put it on there. Now these are sold in um, do-it-yourself shops to go under kitchen cabinets or inside wardrobes. They're mains powered, you've got a mains plug on one side here and the good thing about them is you can cascade them so you've got another outlet here for mains so you can string another strip light if you so wish and power it up but you only need one connector here. And that's very useful for when I'm inspecting my loads to make sure that each case has got a load in it and uh, very useful for doing that. Not that expensive and it just adds that little bit to the bench doesn't it? Well I think it does. There. Finally, if you don't use one of these I'll just uh, pick us in here. I suggest you get one. Uh, a lot of people I talk to on the range say, oh, you know, my 
my loads are right up the neck of the case and I can hear the powder crunching when I see the bullet. Well, I don't like that personally. I don't think it's, it's natural. I now, before you uh, make a comment, I don't think it's dangerous, I just don't like it. So a drop tube. Again, it's not very expensive and what you do with this is put it on your case, pour your powder into there and what it does is effectively compact the powder a little bit better than just going straight from a powder thrower and um, on my test it's it's dropped the powder from halfway up the neck to about the shoulder in a 308 so well worth getting not that expensive and it comes with a, a bunch of fittings for different calibers uh, here I've got the uh, 22 calibre on there for 223 and I've got a 30 calibre for 308 so that's another you don't have to have it but it certainly does make for neater loads Right, here's a, here's a tool I really do like. I mean, I don't think I could do without it now. It's the RCBS Case Prep Centre. Really is a nice piece of kit. It's not cheap and it's, its price has got so considerably higher since I bought mine. And if you haven't got one and you find Case Prep just a little bit oh, repetitive and uh, can cause a bit of hand strain if you're cleaning de um, cleaning primer pockets, chamfering, um, neck cleaning, that, all that kind of thing. It does get a bit wearing if you're doing a hundred cases. Now this takes the effort out of it. You've got five rotating stations here. These, as standard you get the chamfer inside and out and primer pocket cleaning and a neck brush. And the good thing about this device is you can fit other people's tools into the various rotating stations. So you don't just have to buy RCBS, you can fit Lee, uh, Hornaday, anything with this thread. Now, excuse me that I don't know the thread because it's American. Um, but I've put various accessories on here. I've seen some YouTubes where people have uh, fitted case trimmers on, um, and they've modified the a leaf for instance and then fitted it in here and I recommend this I can't recommend this enough if you're a bit like me and you get fed up with them um, doing primer pockets then you've got to change the head on the hand tool uh, seems to go on forever so I'm really quite keen on that I wouldn't be without it here's another indispensable tool Lyman Universal Case Trimmer um, you don't need to have shell holders for this, it grips anything up to I think about 4570. You just change the pilot here. Use this a lot, swear by it. What I did do um, is buy the power adapter, I've done a video on that. Makes it a lot easier to use. Again, can get quite wearing doing a hundred cases. So, recommend that very highly. I've um, got a carbide cutter for it now which I'm going to fit when this one blunts up. Also a little thing on here you can see I've got my trim to lengths written on this bit of uh, MDF here so that uh, I know what to trim down to. Just a small thing but really is a nice tool and when you uh, fit a drill driver to it really does speed things up so I recommend that most highly okay reloading dies I started off with standard ones and uh, they're fine I mean if you're starting up they're not too expensive and they do the job however uh, because of the type of shooting I'm doing long range stuff and etc I really want the best I can get out of my uh, reloads so this is a Reading set competition decap and sizing and the really useful one is the competition seating die with a micrometer adjust at the top here this enables you to set a depth and if it's not correct when you measure you can correct by one one thou increments here or half a thou if you can judge it and when you say you move 5 thou on here on the micrometer you actually get a 5 thou 
uh, increase or decrease in, in seating depth. So the micrometer is accurate and once you reach the, the depth that you require for your particular load um, you can make a note of that micrometer setting and go back to it at a later date. However what I do um, every time I go back even if I haven't changed bullet, it's the same bullet, say a Sierra Match King 175 I always back the gauge off 10 thou check the first bullet that I see check the cartridge overall length and then reset it back to the length I want it's just to take care of any uh, slack, any changes and as far as run out goes uh, I've tested my loads with, with these gauge, um, dies sorry, and they're all under 2000 so very pleased with that worth the money and it does reduce the hassle with uh, setting your depths you don't have to guess this is my 223 competition die set this is Forster same thing decap size micrometer competition seating die uh, one criticism of this um, is that it, the, the graduations, the witness marks on the micrometer are hard to read um, you, you know as you can see here you can't really see them, and some people wipe it down with um, alcohol and fill it in with some sort of white filler I haven't bothered with that again the micrometer is accurate and I do the same thing, I always back off uh, say 10 thou on the micrometer seat measure and hopefully it's 10 thou off and then I reset it I don't trust it always to go back and that may not be the, the, the problem of the die it may be the press um, so I just do that as a sort of belt and braces exercise again run out on the 223's loaded with this is under 2 thou so uh, they are expensive but they they do do what they say and again you need uh, confidence in your ammunition I think that it's the best you can get it so I recommend both Forster and Reading dies uh, if you want the ultimate priming I use the RCBS hand priming tool very quick, e quick and easy to use and a nice little touch a standard pack of primers fits in the loading tray and you don't have to muck around trying to, you know, on some of them the, the tray is too small and this hangs over and it's, it's quite awkward to load the primers into it so I recommend this it comes with uh, adapters for large and small primers very easy to use, uh, I've done a video on it and you can sit there and uh, gaze out the window or daydream while you prime. Primers, I quite like Winchester when I can get them and the reason is that when you open the pack they're all up the right way so when you turn the pack over onto the tray and open it all the primers end up the right way which is handy. The tray that fits into the hand primer does have the ridges on it so if you, you've got um, primers that are all over the place like um, Federal you, you know they're, they're sideways when you open the packet so there's no way you're going to get them on there the right way up put them on shake this and the ridges on here I don't think you can see them oh, you might be able to the ridges on here will do the same as about one of those priming uh, flippers that you can buy so I recommend that works very well and it makes the job easy these are the two powders that I use exclusively uh, for my reloads I don't uh, reload a lot of um, different calibers as you know I only reload two which is 308 and 223 uh, mainly because they're military spec and um, I like to shoot what the, the military are using. 
I use Varga for my 308 and Reloader 15 for my 223. Now the, the good thing about these two that they are interchangeable and when I say that I don't mean you can just swap one weight uh, for exactly the same uh, with the other powder you still got to refer to the reloading book but you can use Reloader 15 in 308 and Varga in 223 so if I run out of one I can use the other I've experimented with H380, BLC2 and I prefer these two Reloader 15 seems to be cleaner in my 223 that meaning really that the case necks are cleaner than uh, other powders and Varget um, similarly uh, I found that H380 in my rifle uh, seemed to be the cases were dirtier um, and Varget seems to burn cleaner so they're the two I recommend uh, and that's all I've got now I've got rid of all the others okay here's a couple of the um, aids that I use for cleaning my rifle the first one is forest bore foam uh, you've seen me clean my 308 with this. Basically, you shoot it in from the chamber end till it comes out the muzzle. It's, leave it in there for oh half an hour or so, and then run a patch through or a few patches. And usually, the first patch will come out because the greeny blue colour if you've got a copper deposit. So it does get rid of that. A lot of my colleagues use it. Uh, no complaints actually. Works well. The second is Break Free, it's a CLP. Uh, I use that mainly for cleaning my bolt or lubing my bolt and the, and the raceway. It seems to smooth things out very nice indeed. For the bore, however, I use standard gun oil. Uh, I, when I've finished everything, I run an oil patch always, even if I'm just shoot, shooting next week. Uh, I once made the mistake of leaving a rifle. Um, for months without uh, oiling the bore and it, it actually had rusted so I don't do that anymore and uh, so that's the end of that one